principal insolvency procedures in the United States arise under the United States Bankruptcy Code. Bankruptcy law in the United States is federal law, and the same bankruptcy code applies in all 50 states and Puerto Rico. Although there are definitely state nuances to the way bankruptcy law is interpreted and implemented in the various jurisdictions. In addition to federal bankruptcy law, there is federal receivership law, and each state has receivership law. And so sometimes insolvency situations are dealt with under uh, receiverships. Lastly, most states have either as common law or codified what are called assignments for the benefit of creditors, which is a more informal uh, process for dealing usually with liquidations as opposed to restructurings. And those, those laws are different from state to state, and not every state even has that. But a, a, many of the large states do have that, and it's utilized in narrower situations. A debtor is able to continue controlling the business in insolvency under most circumstances in Chapter 11. Chapter 11 is the um, portion of the bankruptcy code that is devoted to restructuring. And there's a concept um, in Chapter 11 known as debtor in possession. And unlike many European countries, um, in the United States under Chapter 11, there is a presumption that the debtor will remain in possession of its assets and in control of its business. And only if circumstances justify it does the court ever appoint a trustee to take over those responsibilities. So in a typical Chapter 11 case in the United States, the debtor by definition stays in control of its assets and its business and um, meaningfully controls uh, how the process goes forward. If someone would want a trustee appointed, the statute provides circumstances under which that's appropriate. The person asking for the trustee has to prove those facts, and if the court determines that cause exists, then a court might appoint a trustee to administer a Chapter 11 case. The importance of particular stakeholders in an insolvency proceeding really differs from chapter to chapter. Um, in a typical chapter 11 case, the debtor in possession as the operator of the business and the owner of the assets really has meaningfully con meaningful control over the process, although secured creditors that have liens on the significant assets of the case, most importantly the cash, um, also play a very significant role in how successful the case might be and in what manner it might proceed. Creditors committee, usually comprised of unsecured creditors, um, may play an important role in some cases, and in some other cases, they play less of an important role. In a Chapter 7 case, which is a liquidation case, the Chapter 7 trustee, who is automatically appointed and who controls the assets and controls the process, is typically the most important player, with the secured creditor once again playing an important role. But because the goal of a Chapter 7 case is so much narrower and so much more limited, um, the interplay between the parties is much less significant than it is in a Chapter 11, where there very well might not be a community of interests about what ought to be happening and how it should be proceeding. My most interesting cases and my most successful cases are surprisingly not the same. Um, I find the large cases with the complicated issues to be the most interesting. Uh, the two that come to mind uh, are my recent uh, involvement in the Toys R Us bankruptcy and also when I was the fee examiner in the City of Detroit bankruptcy. The City of Detroit case was the most unique and different and interesting case that I've ever been involved in. And while I was involved in it administratively and not substantively, it was quite, quite an interesting experience. My most satisfying cases have tended to be smaller cases, cases where uh, I was having a greater impact on the outcome. 
A couple of cases come to mind. I handled a large construction-related industry case in Wisconsin many years ago in which we managed over the objection of a, a large parcel of, unsecured, of secured creditors to reorganize the company, uh, keep the owners in place, and pay back creditors a substantial amount of money. It was a very successful case. Um, another case that I handled more recently was a small manufacturing company in the United States uh, where we actually did a true reorganization, which uh, in the last 10 or 15 years is the exception and not the rule. Most cases these days tend to be sale cases where the existing management gives over control of the assets or the enterprises to some third party. In this particular case, uh, involved equity that was able to hang on to their business, uh, come out of Chapter 11, pay their creditors an amount that was necessary, and continue to this day to be in control of their business and enjoying the profits of that business. My name is Robert Fishman. I'm a partner in the law firm of Fox Rothschild, which uh, is headquartered in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's a uh, large national U.S. law firm. I reside in the Chicago office. Um, Fox Rothschild has uh, offices in about 28 cities across the United States. We have approximately a thousand lawyers uh, covering pretty much every area of expertise. My particular area is bankruptcy and insolvency work. Um, my practice is a national practice, so I handle cases all across the country. Uh, I do a lot of work in uh, Delaware, which is a very busy bankruptcy location in the United States. Uh, and we have a, a Delaware office, and so we handle a lot of cases there. But I also handle work uh, across the country, including Florida, Richmond, Virginia, California, New York. Wherever the cases are, um, if uh, circumstances justify, then that's where we'll go to handle the case. Well, clients are not one size fit all. And so each client situation is bound to be just a little bit unique. And so what's really important is understanding the client's needs, understanding the client's goals, and helping the client devise a strategy to meet those goals. Sometimes you have to make a client's goals more realistic. Sometimes you have to offer choices, advise of the pros and cons, and then help the client decide what path to take in order to have the best opportunity to get the outcome they seek. I'm Bob Fishman. I'm a partner at Fox Rothschild and I'm an insolvency lawyer. I am available to assist you and any of your clients with any of your needs across the country in the insolvency world. Um, if I can be of any assistance, please give me a call. If I can't handle the matter for you myself, I will find someone who can handle it for you. I look forward to having a chance to work with you.